Hey guys, before we hop into today's episode, I want to give you a heads up that we have a five-day free online trading workshop coming soon called Bridging the Gap. It's going to start on August 9th and run through the 14th. You can sign up at www.tier1trading.com. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Hey traders, in today's episode of the Trading Coach Podcast, we're going to talk about stress versus distress, understanding not just what mistakes you're making, but why you're making them. So earlier this week, we had a very good conversation in the live trading room with a trader who came in first thing Tuesday and said, Akil, I broke my rules. And uh, obviously that is a bad thing, but we want to celebrate kind of the, the honesty that traders have. You know, we're all going to make mistakes, right? We are human beings. We're all going to go through this natural learning curve in trading and, and things get different um, from kind of the, the actual learning period to the demo trading period to the live trading period as, you know, different emotions and, and whatnot start to take place. But one thing that we do celebrate is honesty. We celebrate in owning your mistakes. And I think that's something that we could do a lot better job of in real life as well, right? Owning our mistakes instead of shifting blame. So we started to dig into the why, um, you know, why did you make this mistake? Uh, because, you know, it's very easy to identify the what, right? It's a very, a very easy, excuse me, I just came back from a long bike ride, so a little, little out of it right now, but we, we, it's very easy to identify what we did wrong. But identifying what we did wrong doesn't necessarily help us fix it we have to understand why. And the mistake that the trader made was he exited a trade early. He entered a trade, He the trade started to go against him right away, he panicked, he stopped himself out, only to come back and of course see the trade uh, uh, hit what his would-be targets would have been. And we kind of dug into, well, why did you stop yourself out? You know, what is the purpose of a stop loss? Why do we have stop losses? Why do we put stop losses in specific locations, right? For you guys that are new, right, the stop loss is a place in the market where you've basically said, no mas, I am wrong, I want to exit, I want to take my loss, and I'll live to fight another day. A stop loss also shouldn't be random. That's a major mistake that many newer traders make with stops and targets both is they put them in random locations, right? A stop loss shouldn't just be 10 pips below here. A stop loss shouldn't just be at this specific number. It should be, in my opinion, it should be at a technical level where the market tells you that your prediction is wrong. So whatever you enter the trade based off of, let's just say, structure for uh, an example, if price is at a level of structure, it is holding at a previous level of structure support, your stop loss should be below that level of support. Because if that, that level of support is the reason you entered the trade, is probably one of the main reasons that you're getting involved. If that level is broken, you can most likely be honest with yourself and say, ah, you know what, you know, I'm wrong. Uh, my whole trade was based off of this level of support holding, price is trading below it, probably going to be wrong, I should take my money and live to fight another day. But let's take the example of this trader and let's say he had a stop loss above that level of structure, right? The level of structure is the reason that he took the trade, yet his stop loss is right above it, right? Well, that stop loss doesn't really make sense, does it? Because price can go there within the normal kind of buffer zone that it has and not really say that your prediction was wrong. So it's kind of a pointless stop. And that's similar to what happened to this trader. He saw a candle go against him. He panicked, said, oh my gosh, it looks like a bearish candle. Um, that means I must be wrong because if I was right, price would have went in my direction right away. And the truth is price isn't going to go in your direction right away. Every once in a while, you'll get a pain-free trade, right? Those are the ones where you just, you enter, it V reverses and goes in your direction. Those are pain-free trades, right? Every once in a while, the majority of the time, the market is going to put you through a massive amount of pain. It's either going to stall at your entry before doing something. It's going to blow right past it before settling. It's going to play up and down and take you in the profit and the loss to break even, the profit, the loss to break even. It makes you earn your money. That is for sure. Um, so to panic and 
allow that panic to cause a reaction off of a single candle so early into the trade is basically what the market wants to do. The market is trying to bait you into making a mistake and the market won. And I thought about this conversation today during my ride. I did about a 22 mile bike ride, right? I got a road bike, you know, I got the clip in cleats, all that fun stuff. Um, and I'm trying to build up uh, over the summer. Just started, uh, I think well, this is my second week of my summer workout uh, program. So just trying to build on the miles each and every week. And I did a, a, a 22 mile one today where the back end of it was very hilly. And, and one of it, one of the, the hills is a tough one. It goes over this kind of this graded bridge. So if you know what a grate is, like you see it in the, um, in the streets where the water drains, um, it's an entire bridge that is one great. And I absolutely hate riding over this bridge because it's very slick, it's very slippery, it's very bumpy. You kind of, if you don't steady the bike the right way, boom, your tire is going to slip out from underneath you and you are going to fall. And that's the last thing you want to do, especially as oncoming traffic is coming off of like a, a blind turn. To make matters worse, after this graded bridge, right, is this very steep incline, right? So I'm, I'm going slow on this graded bridge and I'm heading right into the steep incline without a lot of speed, I've also got some worn down cleats. So your cleats are the things, if you can imagine your sneakers, right? Your, your bike shoes. The cleats kind of are screwed into your bike shoes. They're, they, they're what clip you into the bike, right? So you're basically locked into the bike. It's not like a little foot slip where you can pull your foot in and out. You gotta kind of like flick your ankle and, and do all that fun stuff. So my cleats are pretty worn down. So sometimes if I push hard, the cleat slips out my foot goes to the side, I'm off balance, and I've almost fell about four or five times now. Um, so picture me going over this graded bridge, right? Steadying the bike, going very, very slow because I'm trying not to slip, and then going right into this massive hill, very steep grade, and all of a sudden, in my first couple of pushes, guess what happens? Boom, my right foot clips out. And in hindsight, right? It reminded me of this time when I first got a road bike, when I first put cleats in. And again, I'm never used to being locked into a bike. Usually my foot can just come off the pedal like a normal bike. And I remember the first time I was up a hill and I, and I, I, you know, I guess I wasn't in the right gear and I wasn't going as fast as I thought I would. And I started to swerve a little bit and I, I panicked and I, and I just moved the bike even more. When I panicked, I couldn't unclip. And then boom, I just fell on the side of my face and rolled down the hill, right? That was my first kind of bike fall, my initiation. Um, but it was due because of this panic. I felt myself slowing down. I didn't know what to do. So I started freaking out. I'm just moving my body. I'm trying to get out. I'm not thinking about getting out the right way. I'm just moving limbs quick and it, it sent the bike off balance. And think about that time. And there were a few other falls after that before I got used to it. And I think about this time where I'm, up the, I'm, I'm going almost zero miles per hour. I'm going up this very steep hill. My foot is off the pedal. And I just calmly look down flip the pedal around, stick my foot back in, change gears, and get back to grinding up this hill. And it happened so seamlessly. Like, And, and I, I thought about it for a second. I'm like, wow, that, Akil, I, I impressed myself, right? Akil, that was, you handled that pretty calmly. And it reminded me of this conversation I had with Dr. Brett uh, Steinbarger, where he talked about the difference between stress and distress and really how newer struggling traders handle the markets versus uh, veteran traders. And, and, and we, we both go through these periods, right? Just one goes through stress, one goes through distress. So stress is what the normal trader goes through, where we, let's say, going back to the trading example, right? We see a trade, we enter a trade, we get a candle that goes against us right away, Obviously, we're not happy. We're not, you know, we're not doing, you know, cartwheels and whatnot because we're losing money um, at a point where we expected the market to reverse at. It, it could be looked at as a very stressful period. I think every time you're losing money, it could be looked at as a stressful period. The difference is we understand that it's stress and it doesn't cause a reaction. It's just, hey, this sucks, but you know, this is what trading is. It doesn't always make it easy for you, right? And we're able to do that because we have years and years and years of experience, right? Experience in the market 
looking at trades and seeing them go against us only come back to win. Uh, trusting our stop, doing the amount of back testing, knowing that, hey, we you know we did everything we we're supposed to do. It was a great A trade. We followed the plan, right? Having that confidence and having that experience allows it to simply stay as a stressful situation where it sucks, but it's okay. My, flip, my foot uh, slipped off the pedal on the beginning of a very steep incline, but it's okay. Just spin it around, clip back in, boom, you're good to go. Problem solved, right? You survive. Distress is what struggling or newer traders go through, where you have the same situation, but instead of just dealing with it and it not causing an emotional reaction, it does cause an emotional reaction, right? It, 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 it turns from just a stressful situation to a panic mode. And when you panic, you take some type of impulse action. Typically, an impulse action is some type of self-preservation action that doesn't come with thinking, right? You're just, I, I gotta eliminate the pain, do this, boom and it ends up making your situation even worse. And that is exactly what this trader went through. And the reason why we don't punish him is because this is expected, guys. Again, this is expected as a newer trader. Again, what did I tell you causes a, a consistently profitable trader, experienced trader to keep it as stress, right? It's experience over time. It's making these mistakes, it's seeing these mistakes, it's dealing with similar situations, but handling it the right way. So early, early on in a trader's career, you can expect these kind of hurdles. You can expect these obstacles. Yes, we're going to warn you of them. We're going to tell you not to do it. But guess what? Like a kid, you're still going to do it, right? I tell my kid all the time, hey, Jaden, don't do that. And what's he do? He, he does it and then he gets in trouble and hopefully he learns a lesson. We'll see. Um, but it's the same thing that traders do. So I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those coaches that says, you know, obviously we should aim for perfection, but I'm not, I'm not going to be unrealistic and, and punish you for making a mistake, guys. They're going to happen. But the next time you make a mistake, I, I just don't want you to think about what you did wrong. Obviously, that's important to identify, but that should be pretty obvious to you. I want you to think about why you did it, what caused it. If you can identify those feelings, right, the roots of those feelings that caused the action, the next time that, hand, the next time that mistake or, or that situation comes up, you'll probably be in a situation where you can handle it a lot better and not have the same type of emotional reaction because now you have a better understanding of what to do, what to not do, how good actions can help you, and how bad actions can hurt you. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the podcast. As always, do me a favor, leave me a rating and a review. Also, if you haven't done so already, check out the new YouTube channel from Jason Greystone and myself called The Trader Coffee Break. It's a brand new show. We're gonna be live each and every Thursday with the topics that you guys wanna hear about. YouTube.com, search The Trader Coffee Break, subscribe, like, and I'll see you next Thursday.